Hello and welcome to Dish Shelved with Adam White. Today is the first day of Sci-Fi July. It's where I'm going to take a look at uh, some older authors of science fiction that should be more well known than they are. Uh, they've kind of got lost in the shuffle somewhat of uh, the great ones. And I'm going to look at uh, some of their works and see just how good they were and uh, and kind of go from there. Now the first one that I read was Needle by Hal Clement. Again, this is my amazing technology budget at work here. Uh, I've got a book here, but I wanted to show you what the original cover looked like. Uh, it was an old vintage science fiction novel. Uh, it originally ran in, I believe it was Astounding Stories uh, in 1949. So uh, it's it's been a while since it was published. But this was what the original cover looked like when it was made into a book after its original serialization. Uh, this is the book that I got it in. The Essential Hal Clement Volume 1 Trio for Slide Rule and Typewriter. Uh, it was a book put out that was uh, three volumes that has um, the Essential Hal Clement. Uh, there is this volume which has his three top novels including Needle uh, and there is a second volume that has, I believe, 17 of his short stories, and a third volume that has his mesclin stories, which is about a particular planet uh, that I'm not too familiar with because I haven't read them. I had never read Hal Clement before this, but uh, you can actually get it on Kindle, the mesclin stories, for cheap. Uh, not super cheap, it's like 12 bucks or something, but... Um, you can get the Mesklin stories on your Kindle, but this and the uh, short stories are only available in print right now with uh, these essential volumes. And they're a little bit older, so it's I was lucky to find them intact. Uh, I want to read a little bit from the beginning of it. Even on Earth, shadows are frequency good, frequently good places to hide. They may show up, of course, against lighted surroundings, but if there is not too much light on one side, one can step into a shadow and become remarkably hard to see. Beyond the earth, where there is no air to scatter light, they should be even better. The earth's shadow, for example, is a million-mile-long cone of darkness pointing away from the sun, invisible itself in the surrounding dark and the bearing the seeds of still more perfect invisibility. For the only illumination that enters the cone is the starlight and the feeble rays bent in its blackness by the earth's thin envelope of air. The hunter knew he was in a planet's shadow, although he had never heard of the earth. He would known it ever since he had dropped below the speed of light and seen the scarlet rim disk at the black squarely ahead of him. And so he took it for granted that the fugitive vessel would be detectable only by instruments. When he suddenly realized that the other ship was visible to the naked eye, the faint alarm that had been nibbling at the outskirts of his mind promptly rocked it into the foreground. He had been unable to understand why the fugitive should go below the speed of light at all, unless in the vague hope that the pursuers would overrun him sufficiently to be out of detection range, and when that failed, the hunter had expected a renewed burst of speed. Instead, the deceleration continued. The fleeing ship had kept between its own, his own, and the looming world ahead, making it dangerous to overhaul too rapidly, and the hunter was coming to the conclusion that a break back on the direction they had come was to be expected when a spark of red light visible to the naked eye showed that the other had actually entered the atmosphere. The planet was smaller and closer than the hunter had believed. That's how Needle starts. Uh, I'll show you both here. And uh, it turned out to be a really good book. 
uh, it's you get a sense from that first page that uh, it's going to be really science fiction-y, but a lot of it, it's, I guess, could be considered hard science fiction, but in a light way. Uh, <clears throat> it deals mostly with uh, a, two symbiotic creatures, one a fugitive and one a hunter, a detective, uh, land on Earth and crash, both of them crash into the ocean and they end up on this island. It's a very small island with not a whole lot of people and uh, the symbiote that's the detective finds a host that's asleep and so he, he enters him through his feet, and uh, he has to figure out a way to communicate with him because he knows these that humans have never been part of a symbiotic relationship, and he doesn't want to you know freak out the person he's in, and it turns out to be a 15 year old boy named Bob, and he immediately gets sent off to school in Massachusetts. So he's left with learning about human uh, language and human customs and trying to figure out a way he can communicate with them after he learns English. Uh, that's the gist of the story at the beginning of it. And then... Uh, the rest of it turns into how can he get back to the island and how can he find this other symbiote who he has no idea where he... I mean, he has a general idea of where he landed, but he has no idea who he could have taken up a symbiotic relationship with or if he's on the island at all still. And it's a so it's a science fiction story about first contact essentially with an alien creature but also it's a detective story that uh, they do some really interesting things to discover who if anyone on the island is uh, has been infected by this uh, alien refugee not refugee but a uh, criminal essentially that uh, wouldn't have the same scruples as the hunter does uh, really good book really enjoyed it uh, it's not too long so you can read it in a couple of settings uh, I really enjoyed how Clement's writing uh, very uh, tight writing uh, he doesn't go on forever about stuff. He just lets you know what you need to know and moves on. Uh, he did some really clever things with the interaction between the hunter, which is the alien detective, and uh, the boy host. Uh, really interesting, the connection between the two of them. Uh, he really did a lot of interesting things with how they could communicate and what all they would do uh, to find this alien criminal that they're looking for. Uh, so it was a real interesting mix of uh, science fiction and detective story, something you don't see a whole lot. Uh, especially at the time this was written. Uh, it was kind of considered a no-go if you did detective fiction along with uh, science fiction for some reason, which I think the two could go together wonderfully, as this novel illustrates. Uh, and, I mean, it's not a hardcore detective novel, but they do spend the whole time trying to discover where this other symbiote went and how they could do it. And they have to follow the clues 
and uh, it revolves around all of his friends and family and uh, the other inhabitants of the island. And some of the things they're doing on the island are really neat, kind of science fiction-y things, uh, especially for 1949. And uh, just, just a really good novel. There is a sequel called Through the Eye of a Needle. I'm not sure what it's about. I have it on order in an old... Uh, the only way you could get it is through an old vintage paperback. Uh, so I have it on order, and I'm definitely interested in reading it. Uh, I don't know at all what the story's about. It didn't say on the description. There was no description, so I just kind of ordered it blindly, and uh, I'm looking forward to reading it because I enjoyed the first one. Uh, Hal Clement wrote a lot of other stories, uh, lots of short stories, uh, several other novels. Uh, turns out he's a really good writer who should get uh, a lot more recognition than he does today. Uh, he is known amongst science fiction fans, but I mean among a larger audience, he's not as well known as someone like Asimov or Theodore Sturgeon or uh, other authors like that. Uh, so he... I think he deserves more of a look, and I'm looking forward to reading his other novels. Uh, there's two more in this one. Uh, I believe it's Ice World and Close to Critical. Uh, so this is a volume I'd highly recommend uh, while you can still get it. Uh, the Essential Hal Clement. And uh, I actually have the second volume on order, too. Uh, I'm interested in reading his short stories. And it collects, I believe, 17 of them. Uh, anyway, this is my first look for Sci-Fi July. I hope you've enjoyed our time together this week. I have. And uh, I hope that you will give Hal Clement a try. Uh, he's deserving of an audience. And, um, he just is a really good writer, uh, really solid writing. And the only complaint I might have about it is the ending I thought was a little abrupt, but it was almost comical. So I can see why he did it the way he did, uh, because there is elements of humor in here in several places, but, uh, Overall, really excellent story. It's called Needle by Hal Clement. Uh, the reason it's called Needle is a pretty simple explanation, but they go into it in here, so I won't tell you what it is. Uh, it'll be obvious when they mention it. And some of the things that I thought of during the course of the book as what could be evidence to or against who could be the uh, the villain symbiote, uh, they actually address it in here and it, just as I was thinking it. So he really covered all his bases and made a really tight, interesting novel. And I hope you will give Needle by Hal Clement a chance. And thank you for hanging out with me this week. And I will see you next week for more Sci-Fi July.